Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the main tactical themes in Arsenal's narrow 1-0 win at Wolves. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Arsenal's pressing, then we'll shift to Wolves' defensive shape and see how Arsenal were able to bypass it, and then lastly we'll focus on Arteta's adjustments following Martinelli's red card. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Wolves in a 3-4-3, and Arsenal starting in what should have been a 4-2-3-1, but look more like a 4-1-4-1 as Odegaard was dropping off into more of a central midfield zone. So first we'll focus on Arsenal's pressing and it was straightforward. What we ended up seeing from them was that they had their front three in Saka, Martinelli, and Lacazette stepping towards the center backs. And then in that midfield zone, they had Odegaard and Jaka pushing forward to close down Den Donker and Ruben Neves, who was looking to get on the ball. That leaves space out in the wider areas for Marcel and Semedo to be free passing outlets. But what Arsenal did here was that rather than having the midfielders shifting over to close them down, they were intent on Cedric and Tierney stepping forward to apply pressure. As you can see, now what you end up having is a 3v3 because you have White and Gabriel ahead of Jimenez. And then you have Thomas Partey in that central midfield area protecting the center of the pitch and watching the movement of Podence and Trincao who are dropping off deeper into that central area. If those wider players were looking to shift down into the channel, that's where you would see White or Gabriel shifting across to close them down tightly. And both center backs did a very good job of ensuring that neither Podence or Trincao can significantly impact the game in Arsenal's third. Ultimately, it was in integral that Arsenal pressed this way given the manner that Wolves look to attack. So if you have the front three closing the back three, we know that Wolves want their wing backs to push forward as attackers because Podence and Trincao's movement is often lateral or they drop off into that midfield zone to create overloads. So in this situation, you're ensuring that the back five, neither Dendonker or Ruben Neves can get on the ball. And then you have Thomas Partey shifting laterally to track the movement depending on the side the ball is being played out of. Out in those wider situations, White or Gabriel will be the spare man as they have 2v1 against Jimenez. And then Thomas Partey can deal with the spare player from the opposite flank that's looking to drift in central. And then when we look to Arsenal dropping off into two banks of four, you often had Lacazette sitting ahead of Dendonker or Ruben Neves depending on who was the deepest midfielder, and then you still had Udegaard and Jaka just ahead of Ruben Neves and Den Donker. In those situations, Saka and Martinelli were tasked with dealing with the movement of Semedo or Marsal, but due to the fact that Ruben Neves nor Den Donker do look to push forward, this is where they could have Jaka shifting across to help out Martinelli and Tierney dealing with the movement of Trincao and Semedo, and there you can see that the 3v2 is being created, and even if you have Trincao or Podence looking to shift across to run in behind Tierney, Gabriel can shift over over, and Arsenal still have an advantage with the numbers. Thomas Partey would hold a central position ahead of the back four, and he would deal with Podence or Trincao if they look to shift laterally in between the lines. But the significance of having Martinelli and Saka tracking the movement of Marcel and Semedo allow Tierney and Cedric to track the movement of Podence and Trincao if they look to check into the ball by dropping off into that midfield zone. The only real issue that Arsenal looked to encounter when they dropped off into two banks of four was when Wolves created a 2v1 overload out on the right side when the ball was on the left-hand side for Wolves. In those situations, Tierney was tasked with Trincao and Semedo. Whenever Wolves played diagonal balls out to the free outlet and Semedo, Tierney would quickly shift across. And because Ruben Neves was so deep, Xhaka and Gabriel could shift over to deal with any movement from Trincao or Podence looking to make runs off Tierney. In many ways, Arsenal weren't worried about the Wolves center backs getting on the ball and they were focused on compressing space out in those central areas to ensure that Wolves' front three couldn't get service, while also limiting the time Ruben Neves and Den Donker had on the ball. I Meanwhile, when we shift to Wolves, they encountered issues ensuring that Arsenal couldn't play out of the back and towards their own half. They often had Jimenez stepping towards the center back that was on the ball, but then out in those wider areas, they had Podence and Trincao stepping towards the center backs as well and looking to block off the passing lane in towards Cedric or Tierney.
Germany. In that situation, what you end up seeing is that you have Ruben Neves and Den Donker who could be looking a step towards Thomas Partey and Xhaka. But the key thing here was that you often had Lacazette dropping off into that gap between that central midfield. Xhaka was looking to push forward if he wasn't dropping deeper and he was looking to make runs on the outside of Ruben Neves. But it was Odegaard's movement that was integral as he was consistently dropping off into that inside channel to get on the ball in space on the outside of Den Donker. So even if you have Podent stepping towards White or Cedric, Odegaard was now shifting into space freely because Den Donker was focused on Thomas Partey and Wolves didn't have their center backs pushing forward to deal with that threat. The other issue that Wolves encountered was that due to the positioning of Saka and Martinelli on the touchline, Semedo nor Marcel couldn't step forward to apply pressure towards the fullbacks. So what you ended up seeing was that now you have Podence and Trincao high. You have Lacazette dropping off into that midfield zone, so you need Cody to step towards him. But if Cody doesn't step, look at that midfield zone. You have two Wolves players against four Arsenal players that are dropping off deeper. Because if Ruben Neves doesn't track the movement of Xhaka, Xhaka's free to get on the ball. If Ruben Neves tracks the movement of Xhaka, Lacazette could step freely and that pulls out Den Donker. But it leaves Thomas Partey and Odegaard free. So that was a big issue for Wolves. And even when they dropped off into their 5-4-1, they encountered similar issues. Like I said, Saka and Martinelli were ensuring that Semedo and Marcel couldn't step forward. So now when you look at Arsenal's shape, you have Lacazette in the Ruben Neves Den Donker gap, Odegaard in that Podence Den Donker gap, and then Xhaka in the Ruben Neves Trincao gap. So whenever the ball was pushed out towards the center backs, one of the wider players was being pulled out. And because Den Donker was was looking a step into the path of Thomas Partey, Odegaard was constantly receiving the ball in that inside channel out in those wider areas due to the fact that Marcel couldn't step and neither Roman Saiz or Kilman were stepping forward to apply pressure. On Arsenal's left-hand side, we witnessed similar movements that we have in previous weeks. Martinelli is initially hugging the touchline, but he can shift laterally into the kilman semedo gap and then Tierney can push forward while Xhaka holds that inside left position. However, there were times where we ended up seeing Xhaka pushing into the gap between Trincao and Ruben Neves and then looking to get on the ball in between the lines and that's where you need Kilman to step forward to apply pressure. Where Lacazette struggled to impact the game by dropping off deeper and serving as a link man, Arsenal's greatest threats stem down those wider areas and they simply lack the final execution to make the difference because what we ended up seeing was that on the left and on the right, Arsenal were looking to get Saka and Martinelli in behind the wing backs to run at the goalkeeper. And in other situations when Saka received the ball on the right, what we did witness here was Odegaard overlapping run and more importantly, Cedric was getting himself into advanced positions to make overlapping and underlapping runs into the final third. And that's where he was able to find Lacazette in legitimate goal scoring positions. But like I stated previously, Lacazette failed to convert. In this example, you could see Saka dragging away two Wolves players towards him, but actually it's four. And then you have Odegaard making a lateral run off Ruben Neves. Saka squares the ball across his markers into the path of Odegaard and from there you can see he takes three players out of the game with his pass and movement and he looks to make a run into right half space and Odegaard picks it out. When Odegaard slides the ball into that zone, Saka is now looking for Lacazette ahead of the center backs as he pulls one towards him and you can see Marcel looking to recover. But from here Saka pulls the ball into the path of Lacazette and from there you're expecting him at worst to test the goalkeeper and while he does do that, he fails to test him enough and it's a tame first time effort on goal. In the build up to the corner that resulted in Arsenal's winner, we see Saka looking to square the ball across Den Donker and Marcel for Odegaard making a lateral run across the center back and focus on Cedric's underlapping run behind Marcel. From there, Saka takes two players out of the game with his pass, and Odegaard receiving the ball takes away two center backs, and that allows him to slide a first time ball into the path of Cedric. When Cedric receives the ball in the right channel, you can see that there are three Wolves players taken out of the game, Lacazette looking to make a run in between the right wing back and the right center back, and Martinelli calling for the ball at the edge of the box. 
But from there, Cedric looks to pick out Lacazette's run across the center back who isn't aware of his movement, and he looks to deliver a ball in towards the six-yard area. Cedric does that well, and from this position, Lacazette should be testing the goalkeeper, and frankly, he should be putting Arsenal up 1-0, but he fails to connect with Cedric's delivery, and that halts the attack. Over on the left-hand side, it was Tierney making overlapping runs for Martinelli, and we witnessed Martinelli looking to break in behind Kilman and Semedo. And like I stated before, Xhaka was being a bit more adventurous with his positioning beyond Ruben Neves and Trincao, and it was Kilman who wasn't stepping forward. But even in those situations, Arsenal failed to test the Wolves goalkeeper. Ultimately, the game shifted in the second half following Martinelli sending off and Wolves making two attacking substitutions. Their shape didn't alter, but what we ended up seeing was that Arteta was quick to make an adjustment. He ended up sacrificing Saka and bringing on holding and shifting more to a 5-3-1, and this was integral due to Wolves' attacking shape. Because with Arteta expecting Wolves to dominate the ball, now he had 3v3 out in that center back zone, and holding could provide cover for White and Gabriel. And even with the wing backs pushing forward, you could still have Tierney and Cedric dealing with them. In that central area now, you have 3v2, and what ends up happening here was that Lacazette was now dropping off deeper on Ruben Neves, we witnessed Den Donker looking to push beyond Smith Rowe, but even in that situation, what you ended up seeing was that it could have been a 2v1 because you have Den Donker and the left wing back ahead of Cedric. But all Smith Rowe has to do is shift across, and then it's 1v1, and there aren't any overloads on that flank. It would leave Thomas Partey to sit ahead of the back three, and then if Podence or Trincao looked to drop off deeper, he could apply pressure instantly. Because Ruben Neves was sitting a bit deeper, Lacazette could sit on him if Xhaka didn't step forward. And now when you look at their shape, it encourages the center backs to push forward in Saiz and Kilman, and that's when you have Smith Rowe or Xhaka shifting over to apply pressure, and then Thomas Partey covering him. And then you could have the spare midfielder shifting laterally to occupy the space that Thomas Partey was sitting in. Wolves' counter to Arsenal's tactical shift was to bring on Fabio Silva and take off Connor Cody, which shifted then Donker to a left center back role. And that gives Wolves another attacking player in that penalty area, rather than having Den Donker sitting slightly ahead of Smith Rowe. And while this was another proactive move by Wolves to ensure that there were more bodies in Arsenal's penalty area, Arsenal's shape where it was able to contain Wolves' attack, and that was how they were able to claim all three points. So as you can see, while Arsenal struggled to create multiple chances throughout this game, Arteta deserves credit for successfully bringing Arsenal to a difficult environment and tactically containing Wolves with 11 men and then following Martinelli's dismissal. 